Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Ukraine again targeted the Russian oil refinery facilities and oil storages in Kuban, Krasnodarsky Krai, Russian Federation. Last night eyewitnesses filmed some turn kaboom in the place and also the military airfield was targeted too. Those are the remains of the Russian airfield munition storages. Why do I think that it is the munition storage? Because if you look at those devices, well, those are the gliding units for the Russian aviation bombs. As well as this stuff too. So many, many of them were damaged in this hunger. This is again Kuban, so Krasnodarsky cry of the Russian army. And here we may see more of those devices. So, so Ukraine knew what to hit. The airfield is located near Kushevska village and here is the hunger. It was identified by the Astra channel. This is the Russian opposition channel. And this is the Russian oil storage in Smolensk that was targeted around two days ago. At least one, two, three of the tanks were totally kaputed and one was significantly damaged. It is great for Ukraine that it continues the attacks on the Russian oil facilities and especially Russian oil refineries. With the new military support from our allies, Ukraine now might release some of the finances for those kind of the programs to fund their own drone production, to use the drones against the Russian targets elsewhere. And we have the confirmation from Forbes that Ukraine definitely modernized the small piston engine airplane. Ukrainian engineers took a Ninja Sport plane, added GPS and a bomb and produced yet another long-range strike drone. Clearly you may see that drone was carrying a bomb, so potentially this airplane or the drone might be used several times. Well, not in this particular case obviously, but Ukraine tries to make it more functional and cheaper. What's about the Ninja plane? It's the French-made experimental ultralight aircraft. So Ukraine probably bought several of the kits of those aircraft, put them together in Ukrainian territory, modernizing for the drone purposes. A very cheap solution and could be very effective. We already saw how those drones targeted the Russian Shahid production in Tatarstan, which is also the part of Russia. Meanwhile, Russia tries to protect their oil facilities against the drone strikes. Well, those meshes will not help that much against the huge aviation bomb, which drones might carry, but still, this partially could be effective. As for Ukraine, we do not see those kind of the constructions, because those could be not effective for Ukrainian side, because Russia mostly uses Shahid drones, which easily penetrate those kind of the meshes. The warhead of the Shahid drone is 50 kilos, it's quite a lot. It is not a small drone and Russia already modernized some of the Shahids to carry 90 kilos of TNT. So even if the drone explodes somewhere here, still the shrapnel, the shock wave and everything would reach the object itself. But Russia mostly uses cruise and ballistic missiles and against those this construction isn't playing a great role. Well, this image shows how Russia learns on their own mistakes we shouldn't underestimate our enemy, it is very smart. One more question, whether this picture is real or not, I think it is real. Guys, just a short break, if you want to support the job that I do daily on YouTube, you may join my Patreon page, it is available if you follow the link in the video description just below, or you may just scan the QR code available on the screen. Thank you so much for your awesome support. Ukraine also started to use the aerobatic airplanes, in particular this is Yakovlev 52, the Soviet-made airplane, looks like a fighter jet from the Second World War. Those could be capable against the small Russian surveillance drones, as in this case. So Russian Orlan 10 drone was targeted from this airplane. So right here we have some of the war marks, but anyways, let's watch the video. So as it was reported at first, a Ukraine installed a directional mount machine guns mounted in the airplane construction, for example under the wings. But later on there was the other information shared that the other pilot on behind, this is the tandem airplane, so it has two of the pilots. It is used for the training of the aerobatic pilots, so the person in the front or in the back are using AK-47 or 74 to hit the enemy drone. Let's watch this video. So here we go with the airplane Yakovlev 52 and this is the Russian surveillance drone which is flying down on parachute and clearly I may say 100% that it's not far away from Odessa. So Russia launches their 
surveillance drones even to Odessa region near the city. The Yakovlev 52 is kind of popular aircraft, you may find them also abroad in the United Kingdom and also in the United States of America, and we have many of them still in Ukraine. Then I was a student of the National Aviation University, I also worked as a technician on those airplanes in one of the local air clubs. I know the construction of the airplane quite well. Well, even though it looks like the fighter jet from the Second World War, but still it is underpowered airplane compared to those very powerful fighter jets. It has just 360 horsepower. Nevertheless, the look and the sound is amazing. I believe that the machine guns could be really installed but only under the wings of this airplane. It's impossible to make it through the crankshaft of this particular engine. Well, everything is possible, but it would be really expensive. I still do not have the full image of the airplane, but we have at least the part of it. It shows that the airplane was painted in Ukrainian Air Force colors. So definitely it is a Ukrainian army program to use those airplanes. Yeah, far away from the front lines, but if you dare to use them close to the front lines, no, those airplanes would be hit by everything. Well, actually I got this idea to use small piston engine aircraft or turboprop aircraft to fight against the Russian Shahid drones and other stuff. And we know that the British Spitfires intercepted the German-made V-1 cruise missiles at the very end of the Second World War, so the same stuff could be done with Shahids. But now the problem is that there is also a ground fire from our mobile units, which also might harm Ukrainian airplanes. And for this specific reason, you see that the wing of the airplane is colored with lots of the blue and yellow from the upper side and also from the down side, for our soldiers to see that it's the friendly airplane. This is the particular Russian surveillance drone, or LAN, that was shut down by Ukrainian Yakovlev 52. You may even check out the parachute. Meanwhile, the last night Russia again targeted Ukrainian infrastructure. The aim was in Lvivska Oblast. Russia hunts for the Western equipment that was already delivered partially to Ukraine. And also they want to cut railroad supplies, so they hit the railroad stations. One of the missiles targeted the object 15 kilometers away from the Polish border. For the last night, Ukrainian air defense was able to shut down 21 out of the 34 missiles. So 13 of the missiles hit their targets. It means that Ukraine needs more air defense. Around three days ago, President Macron said that it's impossible to secure all of the Ukrainian territory because Ukraine is too big and for it, it requires around 25 of the Patriot systems at least. Just to remind you, Ukraine has two of the systems, Germany will supply one more system, and there are some talks about more systems. Also, the United States of America might supply their Patriot system to Ukraine. This year, Russia really hit Ukrainian energy infrastructure, and during the winter time, it will be very difficult for Ukrainians. About the Russian helicopter K-32 that was burned in Moscow, the Russian media confirms that helicopter was kaputted, but it wasn't the army helicopter, it was a firefighter just for the Moscow region. Russia has delivered the captured Leopard 2A6 tank to the Moscow parade. Yeah, finally, Russians were able to evacuate one of those tanks from Avdivka region, but at the same time, they lost many of the evacuation crews. Together with their vehicles, and only after they moved the front lines further away, they managed to perform this mission successfully. And now they will use it for their own propaganda. Unfortunately, Russia targeted the Kamenka airfield in Dnipro city. It is a general aviation airfield and two of the hangars, I think this one and this one, were ambushed by the drone or something like that. Russians say that there were some of the UAVs inside, but for me it's hard to check. We are unable to spot it on those kind of the images. From what I know, then I visited the place personally in 2021, there were just private airplanes. But now I'm not sure what was stored out there. I have just checked the pro-Russian Crimean groups and they reported that attackums was launched to target Crimea. No any kabooms reported yet, but they say that from Kherson four of the missiles were launched.
Well, we'll see whether this information is real very soon. Right now, let's go to the military map review. We have the latest update and enemy has occupied Berdice. It's been confirmed by the deep state military map source and by the other sources. So as you can see, Russia spread their attack all across this area. They're very powerful in this place. And the Berdice is over here. So Russia already crossed this river in many of the directions. And now they will advance even further, occupying all of this area. It's just a matter of time, unfortunately. For the next few months, Ukraine is still unable to use all of the necessary weaponry because it's still being delivered to Ukrainian army. It's not that fast process. Why am I so sure that Russia would advance towards this place? Because there are no any villages, no significant defense lines from what I know. So Russia might use this direction. And now let's check out the timeline. So significant advancement of the Russian army in this area and also over here in Ocheret and we see it that Russia has a very fast pace. Plus they advanced probably in Keramik today. Yeah, just over here, gray area expanded to reach this river. But at some point they already crossed this river, so they will occupy Keramik. It's 100%. It is almost for sure. The same information we have from the Maiko 73. He said and confirmed that Berdichi is occupied. Russia has multiple of the assault vectors. Ukraine burns the Russian vehicles elsewhere, but it doesn't stop the Russian advancement. And let's check out the situation update for the last week. So it was seven days ago, and you see how fast Russia is definitely here significant significant move of the enemy forces but also russia moved near tanenke today so they went with this attack trying to cross this small river and definitely we may see that they did it they already crossed it based on a micro 73 source and he monitors all of the enemy and friendly channels analyzing the drone images and other information so i trust him usually what he publishes is real. Russia was stopped for two of the weeks near Tenenki, but now they continue the movement because they reinforced their group with fresh forces. Also, Russia progressed in Kharkiv Oblast in Kislivka village. So it is today, it was yesterday. We can clearly see that they are taking more ground and probably tomorrow they will occupy all of the settlement. Definitely not many streets left. And the other source also confirms this information. Unfortunately, guys, on the front lines now, Ukraine doesn't have the initiative. Russia took it fully, but for how long? Well, I believe two or maximum three months. After that, Ukraine will stop Russian advancement, but still will not be able to start its own big counteroffensive. Well, simply lack of their resources this year and probably the next year too. But what Ukraine might do today is to apply sanctions on the Russian oil with the help of the drones, also attacks on the Russian military bases, including Crimea, so Ukraine has the tools for it. The strategy should be to exhaust the Russian army in the long run. The massive counterattacks, as you saw the last year, doesn't help. And Ukraine just can't allow the losses as the Russian army suffers right now, taking more ground. Speaking about the losses, for the last 10 days, Russia lost 591 of the vehicles, Ukraine 191, so 400 units less compared to the Russian army. Those numbers show that definitely the scale of the war intensified, especially in those areas that we just mentioned, the eastern part of Ukraine of Divka direction. Judging on the losses, we may see then Russia went on their attacks with this big list of the vehicles and definitely every day Russia loses many more vehicles compared to Ukraine. Also a very rare radar pod lot was targeted by Ukrainian drone. As you can see it is working so it's not a Russian decoy or something. It was hit by the drone and later on many other drones flown to finish the vehicle and it was finished. The padlot system is able to identify the aerial targets like drones and airplanes, but somehow drones hit it. My friends, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. And as usual, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.